Hello and welcome to the eCliff Leaders Room series. My name is Peter Webb. I'm a Director of uh, Curriculum and Research here at uh, eCliff. And our focus of attention is on leadership energy, which we define as harnessing human energy for a better future. It's my great delight to welcome here today uh, Murugul, who's a recipient of the ILIA Award for 2016. Uh, before going into his story, uh, I simply want to pass over to him and ask some key questions about leadership energy. Uh, Murugul, welcome very much here today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you and for you to be a recipient of the ILIA Award for 2016. Uh, a question that I, I must ask to begin with is, where does your energy come from? And perhaps you could share a little of your story and tell us a little bit about where your energy derives from. So I want to say that one of the most secret, the whole energy I'm getting from my wife. <laughs> that what I'm saying, gentlemen, so something you try to help your wife, then you go to the well. So it, everything I started from my wife, then now it's gone global. So I saw my wife is practicing unhygiene method on her menstrual days. Then I tried to help my wife by giving an affordable menstrual hygiene method. Then later it became to my family, then to my village, to my city, my country, now it's gone global. Now I'm searching women in the mass <laughs> to help the women in the mass too. <laughs> <laughs> so are you suggesting that it's, uh, it's women that give us energy? Yes, yeah, so, so something you try to help to the, your family members or your brother or father then it's working well, then you go to the community. So that's what I saw, many people straight away, they're trying to change the world. I said, please try to change your family, then come to change the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, what gave you inspiration? The women is a key factor for the whole world. So you know, nowadays, you know that around the globe, a lot of things are happening. In spite the world is existing, because of that, you know, the magic, a glue name called mother. That makes the whole world still it is existing. So such a, you know, that powerful, the women, so 50% of the, that, you know, the women population in very, you know, uh, unbelievable condition, even if the personal hygiene is never addressed. So these are all I never know while I'm trying to help 10, 10, 15 years before. Then later I came to know not only in India, in my country, around the globe, hundreds of countries never address this simple women personal hygiene. Because of this, you know, what I want to say, every country is trying to become an America. That means they want to become their country, make a developed country. So up to 2012, I never traveled to any, anywhere in the world except my country. Then first I called by a big company in London. I am landing at Heathrow Airport. I saw a totally different uh, world. Then I called by another big company in Tokyo. I am entering into Japan. Then, you know, Swiss everywhere. Then I found the secret, the difference between developing nation and developed nation, not the Tendland, Polish Road, or the skyscraper, or the metros, or monorail. The secret is, which are the country the women are empowered, that country very well called developing nation, developed nation. Which are the country the women not empowered, the country called developing nation. But these police countries are trying to make a shortcut they are building skyscrapers, um, um, paving roads, but they never bother about empowering women. That's what I said, you fools, you are, even you are building skyscraper, all this thing, your country not going to develop one because you ignored the women empowerment. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the women personal hygiene, the menstrual hygiene is very well connected to the women empowerment. Such an area we are focusing, we are trying, so that I upfront I understood what the cause I'm trying to attempt, so what will make, even that cause become for the inspiration. I never get outsourced uh, inspiration from any leader or uh, somebody spiritual leader, nothing. Even the, the problem become inspiration for me. I think you catch my, my slang. The, what that you are thinking is a problem, the problem is become inspiration for me. So yeah, it, was the, it was the yeah. problem that you saw that gave you the inspiration at yes. first? Yes. It, it's something different I'm telling. Yes, yes. Otherwise you're trying to do something, then one side you're outsourcing inspiration, other side you're trying to do it. Here the single source, the problem itself is giving inspiration to me to solve it. Mm -hmm. It's a different approach. This a is different approach. approach. Indeed. Yeah. And so yeah. rather than start off with, uh, yeah. with an entrepreneurial idea yes. and try to get that idea funded mm -hmm. and, and have that idea uh, promoted, 
you started with the inspiration, the yes. inspiration to help your wife, yes. and then the inspiration to help other women in rural India, yes. and then the inspiration to help women in underdeveloped countries globally. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you are the accidental uh, politician of women's empowerment. So uh, not the accidental, but many times in like this interview, people used to ask, um, why you are so keen on this Murga empowering women? There are a lot of other problems. And then I said, um, there is a connection between women and me. From my childhood, I, my father died in a road accident, I raised by my mother. Uh, that's what I said in Western country, I'm also a single mother's son. It's a wrong meaning letter, you know, I'm having a father. I thought I don't have a father, I claim myself also I'm a single mother. When I'm having two younger sisters, from my childhood I surrounded by women, women. I studied in a co-education school. So that's what I'm having a connection with women, um, the sensitivity, everything. So. That's what I understood, their problem very keen. So. so you were set up for this at an early age? And very importantly, my mother looked for a baby girl as a first uh, child. Even I born as a boy, my mother used to give like a girl like a makeup up to my 13th age. I'm having a huge ponytail. My mother used to put jasmine, rose, everything on the tail. So th maybe this uh, the soft corner will happen out of this side. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to talk about your background yeah. there, but, but I'm also curious about what kept you going through those years uh, when your wife had sort of turned away from you and, uh, and you persisted to develop a machine to produce uh, sanitary pads cheaply for rural women. Uh, what, what was your energy that kept you going through that time? Yeah, so one part of time, the, the whom I am trying to help, my wife never understood. She separated from me, she sent a divorce notice. Then my mother, uh, she thought I'm become a psycho or a pervert because I collected used napkin from other uh, from women. I'm researching. Then the village people thought I'm become a vampire in the evening drinking girl's blood. They, that's what they want to chain my both legs with an iron chain and holy tree upside down. So that's what inspired why I did even this really amazing. So if I thought why, how am I able to do it? Then I said so. I bought a sanitary pad packet 18 years before because while I'm buying the sanitary pad, the shopkeeper never hand over me like other product. He placed a old newspaper, he wrapped it, he looks left and right, he hand over me like a band item. So because of that, there is a curiosity, I want to know what is inside, then I take out the sanitary pad. It is a white color substance, like 8 inches, weighing of 10 grams. I never found any um, um, so, uh, large scale integrator, a chip or something, wires or uh, conductors, nothing. It's very simple, a quantum of cotton wrapped with a cloth. That's why I attempted to make it. If there is some circuit, some, any transistors, I never, maybe I never attempt. Because a simple matter makes me failure for years and years. It became an ego in my mind. Why this simple thing is making me so, so much failure? Then I'm working on an engineering platform, secondly. Even I'm failing for 900 times, there is a hope if I change the angle of the blade or the material, definitely work tomorrow. This way, every day morning is a very thrilling and suspense day for me. It's very, very interesting. No billionaire will enjoy that. That's what I said to the younger generation, do some research. That entertainment, no, nothing will give in the world. Even the billionaire won't get it. Every day, evening, I do some alteration at the machine. Next day, I'm going to make the trial. It's a so thrilling night. I waited for the next day dawn. So this, this kept me go again and again. That's what I said. The same thing, you cannot do the research for longer time with so many failures on speculation or gambling or something because there is no hole. This is an engineering platform. So no matter even you are failing under some time, you will find another hole going on. Even in, I failed even today. Who knows, maybe I will try in somewhere else in India. So there's a, an incredible purpose behind yes. your story. Yeah. Uh, and I, I understand the curiosity about uh, wanting to perfect the machinery, uh, but the purpose that drove you, that kept you going, uh, could you see at the end of this uh, some outcome? Could you see at the end of this something that you felt was contributing to a better future? How was that able to contribute to your purpose? So I succeeded from the day one after eight and a half years to understand the raw material secret. It's like a Da Vinci code. It took two and a half years. Because it is, it is monopoly by two big corporates. How the soft drink industry monopoly two company. Even one company having selling still now, they're having a secret formula. 
You cannot decode by sending the cool drinks to any lab in the world. The same it is applied to this. Then I spend another four and a half years on the mechanical design of machine. Even then, there is a problem after designing the machine. There is a body in India to evaluate the engineering product. They have to certify. The, the, the place is called Indian Institute of Technology. Where I sent the machine, very first time I'm seeing a man with French beard, not full pant off and Bermudas, Nike shoes. They're speaking English with the whole body. The English which I'm speaking here, I'm speaking from only 2009 December. Earlier, I don't know the English. Then the only there the, the doubts is they accepted my thing is innovation. That is a great thing. You know, otherwise they will write as an accident. If you are unable to explain why you did, did this machine in this angle, material, you are unable to explain, they will write on the file an accident. But luckily I explained everything, then they accepted that it is an innovation. But why this man took risk, even in, in his personal life, what is going to do with this small machine? The engineers had doubts, there are, there are the bunch of engineers, six, seven engineers, like a huge hall. Their doubt is how I am going to apply the simple equipment against the big Europe and American companies. Then those days I'm unable to explain to the engineers. Then um, many times you're unable to explain or debate with your wife or mother-in-law, father-in-law, your directors. Don't debate with them. So it practical success. The world will shut their mouth. That's why I took the first machine from my city, you know, down south of India to 2,000 kilometers away to a very back, um, backward uh, state like Bihar, around the globe, where I set up a machine alone in a very rural area. Then I saw a magic is happening. Then I uh, made a single man army, like uh, 10 machine, 20 machine, 30 machine. Then I saw the machine is having capable of giving a livelihood for a group of women that will create a menstrual hygiene more than a corporate. Then I found a secret, the data, in India, not even 10% women are using sanitary pad in 2004. Then I become a public speaker. I am addressing in Delhi, uh, uh, some international forum. Then I claimed in India, only 10% women are using sanitary pad. Then the federal government of India got some angry. Then where is the data? Where is the source? You are simply speaking in the public. I said I worked in hundreds of villages. In your time, it is called a packet survey. Then my government called E.C. Nielsen. I don't know how many million they spent. Then AC Nielsen team took 18 months. They come out a figure. In India, only 12% women are only using sanitary pad. Up to that, the whole world thought India has developed. Then even in India is 10%. You think about Vietnam. You think about you know African countries. It's horrible. So, so this way that it addressed, then I'm, you know, I'm damn sure. So many people are having a doubt. Um, Muruga still like you know, he's doing in a very different way. He's unable to scale up because they want to become a corporate. Then I, I, I told them, there is a corporate presence in my country since 1947. They are unable to make penetration more than 10%. Why should I follow their model? Because the earlier innovation of Muruga, the small machine, this industry is macro and centralized model of doing business. It is a failure model. What I did with this innovation, it is a micro and decentralized model of doing things. Now, the women are making pads in rural areas. They are coming out their own vernacular language brand. They are going to other women. They are talking about one-to-one. -one. They are able to convert from unagent to hygiene method. A beautiful thing is happening. That's what I said. Now, I called up by Paul Polman of Unilever to London, where I am talking about rural marketing with their CEOs. Because rural marketing is a fancy subject. Any company can succeed by revenues go up the profit will go down. But in this situation, Muruga is doing very tremendous in a frugal way, how is he able to achieve? That is called, this is a very big subject I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So this way, we are able to transform the world, maybe you can call it the correct word. So in seven decades, what the government of India, with so many ministers, corporate, not able to do it, the small invention did that. Because you, that's what I said, by drawing a check, no one can change the world. You need hundreds and hundreds of volunteers by word of mouth. Because I said, so far the world saw only retailing, coming out of brand, then retail, then suddenly the whole, all the Jack Ma's, everybody is making a lot of noise on e-tailing. Both this retailing and e-tailing unable to make any so social impact. What is Muruga's model is detailing. Even I'm not giving interview, I'm detailing how I did, uh, what I'm going to do. So this the detailing is a powerful model, but you won't get 
people to employ by paying you cannot do the detailing you need passionate people because you will detail 10th 11th person come you will become bored you call somebody to detail but I am never bothered about uh, even 100 million time I will do the same tempo tempo I am training our juniors or volunteers so this way we are creating an awareness on the women personal hygiene uh, a beautiful thing is happening yes, with yes. the small equipment and uh, you talk about this, uh, in a way, a new economic modelling, yeah. uh, creating a decentralised model. Suddenly, the world is giving me a new term. Muruga, I was a social entrepreneur. Ah. I said, what is that? <laughs> so everything after did, I got the name. So the social entrepreneurship, yeah, I agreed. So both socialist and capitalist model is a failure one. That's why even now there is a poverty exists in the world. The third, social entrepreneurship, is the only thing it can be changed the world. Because here I am not talking about philanthropy. I am talking about something for profit. In spite, we are able to make a social impact more than a philanthropy. Yeah. So, so social entrepreneurship. Yeah, social that's the that's why it's giving dignity to the opposite person. Yeah. I am not tithing. I am not making you a beggar. I am giving a livelihood to you. Then you are going to live on your own. It's a beautiful thing of doing things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But a, a business question might be asked about how do you scale up though? How do you how do you scale this model for uh, for other economies, for other developing yeah, this economies? Part, uh, so I don't have faith in a vertical scaling of CEO this model. We are having a team like, you know, hip hop dance. A group of people will make round, they will dance. Even I'm, I'm going out as a CEO, the other people will catch others hip. So this way a new management I'm trying to form. This way I want to branch out across the globe, like a movement, not a stupid vertical scaling up of a corporate model. It will collapse at any time, like Eastman Kodak or something. But what we are trying, the model will never collapse on any condition. I think this it is will spread to the other planets. <laughs> yes, yeah. and, and I think this is the the breakthrough. I think that you're talking about is is not the work that you did so much, is the actual economic model that you're developing, yeah. and how that economic model is is influencing the lives of women, not just in India but uh, in other developing countries as well. Yeah, that's what I recently I gave a lecture in Harvard. So when I talked about this, then I, they're unable to, you know, w conceive what I'm telling. So everybody, they will mesmerize in the, you know, the volume, uh, turnover, um, before EBBT something, ROI. Then I talked about, okay, fine, you co yeah, I'm coming to your area. We created so far around 1,124 1, localized brand. Why you are not taking that revenue in my account? Mm -hmm. Earlier, Guruga is, uh, you know, my background, I'm a school dropout. I studied, in, uh, I never studied English, nothing. Then, those days, I don't know about any carpet. Now, I'm having friends all over the world, including from McDonald's, you know, KFC. Simply, I can take their contract, change into my company name. I can make a threat to each and every machine, like a franchise. Then, I make a brand. Mm -hmm. In spite of knowing everything, I never, we never did. We make independent. Mm. So making independent called creating livelihood. Something franchising, putting a thread, again controlling on you, with you. Mm. Whenever you switch off, the whole thing will switch off. Mm. So thousand brands that will create around more than 180 million dollars revenue. Then it is scaled up already. I never took into my account. But anyone if you go and test, yeah, it is happening. So that's what some agency, third party agency, they are calculating. In the speed Muruga is going, his value on this year is $1.6 billion. That's why a lot of VCs are circling around me to making it in a single. They're having a doubt the world. Why he is doing like this? He's a businessman, not some Mother Teresa. I think maybe Muruga one day is going to mono brand all these brands. <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't have any idea. I'm not going to mono brand. Yes. Yeah. And so where do you perceive this going from here? So the mission is, is, is the correct term, I think, mission. Creating million rural employment, only in India, then converting India into 100% NAP in country from the current level of 5%. Why I'm keen on India? So I'm not like selfish. So something, your, your, you know, uh, your efforts, it becomes scattered, you know, then nothing will happen, the out outcome. So if you put uh, some centric, somewhere, you know, concentrate, like, you know, we used to play in childhood with the magnifying glass with sunlight. 
So that's what we want to make India. Then later I found even to convert India, my lifetime will not be sufficient. That's why we took a big state in India, Uttar Pradesh, as a role model to the world, converting UP into 100% app using state. Then we can leave to the India and rest of the world. Anyone can copy. Even I, we have IPR rights on our innovation. In spite, I put all the secret up front 10 years before on a public domain. Huh. I'm allowing to people to copy. Many people are worrying about before the inventing, sir, if I tell, somebody will copy. I said, you fool, you do it first, then why you are worrying about copying? In, in this situation, I put everything on public domain. So far, three dozen people only, they copied. It's a huge world. So once you finish the market, definitely the NASA will found the other planet. There is other market too. <laughs> <laughs> Other planets to come. Yeah. So, uh, Burugo, uh, you see that uh, that this can be a model to take to the world. Uh, do you have some way of measuring your progress at this time? Do you know how well you're progressing at this time? Yeah. So, it's very any layman can uh, that measure. You don't need a very complicated method. Nothing. So, wherever you go, I said you just measure the pre-measure of the penetration of that hygiene um, uh, sanitary producing. Definitely says five, four, two. Then launch this scheme, set up a machine, and provide some livelihood for a dozen of women. Remaster after six months, anyone can see the change. Wow. That's what is illustrated by Guardian, Independent, BBC, CNN. Because it's not only talk. So I'm not an author. Wrote a book ten years before. I'm talking about the book only. I am making machine with 643 parts. That machine is sent to the remote part of the world where the engineers are going and installing, providing training. In between, I'm accepting award and giving interview. I'm a live current. Mm -hmm. Only one thing I want to say to the younger generation. Yeah. So don't use your education only to make your life into cakewalk. So use your education to solve a problem in the society. Be a solution provider. That solution will make you somewhere else. You can, you can use as an entrepreneurship, anything. So be a solution provider. Don't use your education only to make your life into cakewalk. Thank you very much. <laughs> Murugo, I'd like to say uh, on behalf of us here at Ecliffe Leadership and Governance Centre, what a great delight it is to have you here and to talk with you. And, uh, and we welcome your new economic model for the world. Uh, Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed the session here at uh, Leaders Room. And uh, we welcome you again to Leaders Room.